Most people think that making positive changes in their lives and businesses is difficult, but it's easier than you think. Dr. Stephanie Aldridge created the Habit Formula book and she wants you to have a free copy of it. In the Habit Formula, you will learn what habits are, where habits come from, and how to form new ones. Habits rule everything in your life whether you realize it or not. Get your free copy of the Habit Formula today. Go to thehabitformulabook.com for more information. Hey everybody, you know what time it is. It's lunchtime with the Habit Master. I'm your host, Dr. Stephanie Aldrich, and I help people change their habits, both professionally and personally. Today is Business Wednesday. We're gonna talk about systems today. And one system I wanted to jump into because I think it really is the lifeline to any successful business is new customers and just customers in general so we need to as a business owner we need to tweak and look at our new customer system or process of how we get new customers how we get them into our funnel and keep them going and keep pushing them through the, the sales process so that they become old clients so that they become ongoing clients so that we can solve whatever problems that they have on a continuous basis and they keep paying us, right? That's what we're in business for, is to make money, is to help our customers solve their issues and problems in their businesses and in their lives, if it's direct to consumer, right? We have to keep doing that. And sometimes we have to tweak the systems that we are engaging with our customers, whether they are new or old, but today, we are going to talk about new customers. Now, before we get started into this, I wanna let everybody know, hey, grab your free copy today. Go to thehabitformulabook.com and what it does, you don't even have to read the book. Just go to the end of each chapter and I have a set of questions or exercises that you can go through. And what it does is it kind of starts narrowing you down, narrowing the focus that you have into one particular area. And usually I tell you pick one goal or one habit you wanna change personally and one that you wanna change professionally. And then you start hitting it hard, right? You put the tires to the pavement and you get the car moving, okay? And when you go to thehabitformulabook.com, you can grab a free copy. If you really want to find the best results possible, dive deeper and upgrade your order and get one of the programs because I'm telling you, it has made such a difference in my life. This is how I've created this studio. This is how I've whittled down my dental practice, making more money in less amount of time, and also being able to two days a week come to my office when no patients are here and write and do what I really love to do, creating information, creating videos for you guys to help in any way that I can so that your life is being lived the way you want it to be right that's what it's all about that's why we're here to have fun and to live the way we want to live and to live with the people we want to live with have fun with them and contribute as much as we possibly can with our special talents right so today business wednesday the systems we're going to dive into today are meant for the executive or the small business owner just to kind of remind you, hey, we've got one more quarter left. Take a, new, take a look, an objective look at your new customer system and see if there's anything that you can tweak, right? To try to make this last quarter the best possible. So we've got four areas that you need to look at. The first area is, how do you get new clients? So is it direct? Because there's two ways. You've got direct and you've got indirect. If you 
can read my writing here. You have direct and indirect. So direct means face to face, right? You're calling, uh, maybe cold calling someone, right? You, or maybe you got a small little lead or something, but you're cold calling them and you're talking to them. Maybe you're at a networking event and you know, you're shaking hands, you're, you're talking with this person and you kind of really connect and you're like, hey, you know, I can solve your problem with my product or service. Let's, you know, get together for a demonstration or, you know, whatever. Let's talk about it, right? Indirect is mostly marketing, hands off. They're coming to you instead of you going to them and trying to, you know, drum up some business, right? Um, it can be direct media, uh, it could be social media, you know, it could be print media, that kind of thing but they're coming to you. Maybe they're hitting your website and giving you their contact information. Maybe um, they're calling your office from an ad that they saw in a print magazine. Um, you know, that's more indirect. Direct is where you're going out and um, actually making a connection with someone and trying to find out what their problems are and you know, can you solve their problems. So as a business owner, You've got to look at your system of how are you getting your new clients? Is there anything that you can tweak with you and your sales team on how you get new customers? Maybe your website needs to be updated if you do have indirect contact with them. Maybe you're not capturing their information and you need to start doing that. Maybe somehow your uh, website doesn't give them information and that's something that you need to provide maybe more links to third-party data right uh, you know convincing them that your product or service is you know has been scientifically or methodically uh, based on certain research that's out there right Usually uh, testimonials. Testimonials is a, is a wonderful thing that you should have on your website that says, hey, other people, I have other customers, they're satisfied with my work, you need to be a customer too. Um, you know, not only can you get five star reviews on Google, but also on your website, put some of those down. There's a lot of plugin things that you can put on your website that draws from uh, Google or uh, what I did was I had people fill out a form for me in the office. It was, you know, a written form. And then what I did was I just copied that form and just put it up as a pay, a separate page. There was like 130 something um, testimonials. Uh, and that wasn't even all of them. A lot of them were repeats. So I, I took those 134 and I actually made a separate page on my website and it says, hey, you want to learn more? This is what 130 other people said, right? And then they can go and read the other reviews. So testimonials and reviews of satisfied previous customers is a very powerful way that can help you get new customers indirectly. You don't have to do anything, right? You don't have to contact them or try to cold call them and follow up with them. That's a different way of doing things. So as a business owner, you need to look at how, uh, how is my system doing of acquiring new patients or new clients, new customers. And direct ways, do I need to go to more trade shows? Do I need to get myself into more uh, you know, meetings of my industry? That's an easy way for you to um, shake hands with people to try, especially if you're a B2B, a business to business company that you help other businesses solve their issues with their clients, that it trade shows, uh, conferences, association meetings are wonderful ways to directly become in contact with a potential new customer. Somebody that maybe you can um, you know, connect with and possibly solve an issue with your product or service. So as a business owner or executive or team leader, 
dealing with new customer systems how do you get new customers through direct or indirect way is something that you need to look at especially for this last quarter and see do i need to up my social media presence do i need up my media presence uh that's written you know um hard media such as tv or radio or maybe you do journal um ads or maybe you write on a blog or a, you send a newsletter or maybe you haven't been sending a newsletter but you need to start sending a newsletter that's something that you know as the executive or business uh, owner you can look at do i need to tweak that the second thing is how do i actually set up the appointment So how do we make them a customer? So you met them, right? Or indirectly they called the office or they sent you contact information through your website, right? What's your next step of bringing them into the funnel? Do you immediately give them a call back? Do you, you know, and then you follow up with them until you get a hold of them. What is your next step in trying to show them what you got, show them your goods, um, and get them to be a client. That This is the second part. So I know for us, the phone is the most important way to get a hold of my office. So you know, we have two lines that they roll over. If somebody's on hold on one line, you know, there, there's um, another one that can be picked up. During the days that I'm not here with patients, which is Mondays and Fridays, my one assistant uh, is at home and she remotely, we forward the calls to her and she can remotely schedule patients or answer questions. If they need an antibiotic, she can call anything in, right? Or check on something for the lab or, you know, whatever. But there's always somebody live calling and talking on the phone. That's how we keep the flow of our system of acquiring new patients and taking care of uh, existing patients, we keep that going, right? How do you set that appointment up? We like to go direct. We want to talk to the person. Let's get them in. If they're having a problem, we want them to come in and see us immediately, right? So you, you have to think about what's the time frame that they're waiting to come see you for either an appointment or you going to see them for a demonstration, which is the next, um, next step here in all of this uh, new customer acquisition system. We want to see you immediately. Now, if you just want a cleaning, there's no issues going on, it might be a couple of weeks before we see you. But if you're having a problem, I've set my system up so that I have enough uh, chairs available that we can see you today, okay? That's what I want. I want immediate service because if somebody's having an issue, they're gonna go off somewhere else. What is your system for trying to bring a new client into your business? You need to be able to shrink that time frame of you actually getting in front of them. Now, let's say you met them directly at a trade show or a conference. They already have a good vibe about you, but guess what? If you do not follow up with them immediately, and I'm talking like, like that night, not giving them a call and trying to set something up with them for a direct face-to-face -face meeting, they're gonna forget about you. They're going to come into contact the next day with other people, maybe another business, maybe somebody that they're like, oh yeah, I like this guy that has it, that's you, the first day. But then the second day, they're like, oh, I like this guy too. And well, you know, this guy already set up an appointment with me. They wanted to meet me immediately. Eh, I'm gonna go with the second guy, right? Don't lose that opportunity. You had a golden nugget and then you dropped it and you lost it. So for us, we want people in. If they have a question about something, we want them in. If they're having a problem with something, we want them in, whether they're an existing client or not. We want them in our office because then we're face to face and we can show them that we can take care of any issues that they have. And you need to do the same thing if you're a small business owner or an executive. You need to get face to face with them. So what is your procedure? What is your system for setting up that first face to face appointment, 
contact, conference, you know, whatever it is, you need to get in front of them. That's the easiest way to sell something to show them that, you know, you can solve their issues. So, you know, what is your system for that? The third thing is when you do set up the appointment, then it's showtime, right? So it's demo or, um, what did I say, demonstration or uh, presentation. Right? It's showtime. It's game time. What is your procedure for demonstration presentation? Do you have proof? Scientific studies. Do you have, um, you know, the industry norm? Do you have third-party data? That's what they call it, third-party data. So proof that your product or solution, your product or service is a, a standard of care, is what it should be doing. It's going to solve the problem, right? An easy way to convince somebody that your product or service is going to solve their problem is by one social proof and we just talked about that with testimonials and previous client satisfaction with your product or service but the second way to convince somebody is written studies written research written articles about you your company your product your service that or studies that says that your stuff is legit and it's going to solve the problem that they have. It has to be written. It's not that, you know, people tend to believe, to go along with, to be convinced of things that are written, that are in print, especially if it's a study, it's been in a journal, it's been, you know, a research or a survey or whatever that is, they usually believe what they're what they see in print it's not what they hear okay this has been you know for hundreds of years they believe what they read or see not what they hear so when you're in your demonstration or presentation like for us so we call it a treatment plan so they have you know three cavities they need to get done three teeth that need to be fixed we always have a written plan that we give them so that they know how much insurance is going to cover. They know how much their portion of it will be. And then they can show their spouse, their insurance people, their, you know, whoever they need to show, their caretaker if they're a little bit older. If it's written, it's kind of in stone. This is you know what it is maybe you need to give them options too. always write it down because they're gonna forget oh yeah I can't forget all the options on this car versus this car on this treatment option in my office versus this treatment option okay insurance is gonna cover this the insurance is not gonna cover this I can do this I can do that if you write it down and also have your proof not only your social proof, your testimonials of previous satisfied customers, but also um, written options, brochures, and you know pictures, and you know whatever else you're going to do, or maybe you send them a link to something or a video, a how-to video, anything that is concrete, that's not hearsay, that they can see and touch and feel, kind of thing they're going to then be able to make an educated decision on how they want to move forward. Do they want to buy from you? Do they want to use your product or service or not? So as a business owner or executive or team leader or whatever, you have to look at what does your team, your employees, presentation and demonstration system uh, entail? Is there any tweaking that you have to do? Do you, maybe there's a new study that was just out on your particular product or service, right? And it really is good and it really demonstrates that your product or service is the bomb and is going to help people, right? You got to train your employees right now, like this week, 
have a meeting and say, this is your new social proof. This is your new third party data that you're going to use in your presentation or demonstration processes. When you do that, it will just start to explode things. So you have to always be tweaking. And that's what this whole thing's about. As a small business owner, as a, a team leader or executive, you gotta always be looking at things. What's working, what's not working? Hey, we're slowing down, what do I gotta do? I know for our business, follow-up is a big thing. And that's our fourth thing, is follow-up. We kinda let people go if they don't make a, an appointment after we diagnose something. Or let's say they cancel an appointment because, you know, stuff comes up or they're sick or they're out of town unexpectedly. They have a business um, meeting or something that runs over and they can't make it. You know, they kind of fall out of, our, out of our realm, out of our grasp, right? So I'm developing a follow-up system. I'm almost done with it. We're going to be tweaking it. I want to get it done the next two weeks. That's my goal is two weeks. Um, so we can hit October, November, December, which is already a, a huge, huge portion of our year is towards the end because insurance, um, you know, will be done by the end of the year and it'll renew at the beginning of the year. So people want to get their stuff done and maximize their insurance benefits by the end of the year. So we are cranking busy, right? We're being crazy. Now, just as I was talking about earlier before the show, if you guys joined me early, um, if you try to do your follow-up and try to create new business while you are busy, you'll never have a slow period. Or if you do, it's not going to be very long because you've already been churning, you've already gotten the wheels going, and you're already building up momentum so that when it is, hey, you know, January, February, and March for me, I'm still going. I'm still busy because I worked on it previously and I got the momentum, got the ball rolling. So as, you know, a small business owner, executive, you got to start doing follow up with people. Now, something I forgot to mention throughout here, your team has to be able to handle objections. Most objections are kind of instincts from people well, I'm not interested, or that's too much, or, you know, whatever. People buy because, not on price, it's because they don't think that you can solve the problem, okay? Maybe they don't see the value in their problem, and that's where you, through your demonstration and presentation, have to convince them that, hey, this is a big problem for most companies or mo most you know, customers or most patients or whatever. And that if we don't do this, this is what's going to, you know, happen. Most of the time, if you create value with them and they can see that you, your product or service can solve their problem, and that's where you convince them through third-party data and also the testimonial social proof, um, you know, you can handle any objection that flies your way. Now, once you do get a customer, or maybe they never buy from you, you still have to follow up with that person. That is probably one of the most untapped areas of potential new business that every small business or big business kind of forgets. Only, I think it's 48% of people follow up one time. And most contacts will buy, most people will buy between five and 12 contacts. So if you're only contacting them once or less, the chances of them buying from you are pretty, pretty low. Usually it's like 1% will buy on the first contact. So you've met them at the trade show. You hurried up and called them for an appointment. You got in to see them and they're like, eh. You know, I got to talk to the board members. I got to talk to my my boss, you know, whatever. Okay, Where, where's your follow-up here? You got a warm client. They're interested. They like you. They're, they're going through the channels to try to buy your product, to try to make sense of it, to try to fit it into, you know, their way of doing business or whatever. What are you doing? 
Do you have a strong follow-up? Are you sending different types of follow-up? Are you being creative? So you're calling them. What about using your phone to text them, right? Text them links to the third-party data. Text them links to newsletters, blogs, um, you know, research, surveys. Text them a video, maybe a demonstration video, maybe a video of social proof, you know, whatever. Get creative with your follow-up, right? These are all um, things that I've learned um, myself for my business. I've been taking um, a training course on that uh, from Grant Cardone. And, you know, he's taught me how to do all this stuff. I'm a dentist, but I'm still a small business owner, right? So I, I kind of have two hats. And I have to make sure that for me to do my dentistry, I already know how to do that. That's kind of the easy part. The harder part is making the business run as a well-oiled machine. So no matter what product or service you have, you still, as the business owner, you have to wear multiple hats. And one thing you have to do is keep your systems in order. Okay, if you guys, if, if there's any small business owners out there or executives that would like more information on training uh, and, and dealing with, uh, you know, Grant Cardone and his associates, um, I can introduce you to them and uh, they can get started with you and your team. What I'll do is I will put a link in the description um, on YouTube. So you'll have to go to my YouTube channel. It's called The Habit Master. And what I'll do is I'll link it, uh, link you up with that uh, to my email and you can send me an email. If you're just joining me on Facebook Live and you, you know, you're interested, shoot me out an email at Doc Aldrich. Let me write this down. I'll put it right here. Doc Aldrich, A-L-D-R-I-C-H, at Gmail. And what I can do is introduce you guys, um, you know, to Grant and his associates, and then uh, maybe set up a uh, conference call with them so you can see what their training is like. And they actually go through each one of these, I mean in depth. There's like 1,500 videos, and they're all like a couple minutes, but they go into every aspect of sales. They go into every aspect of finances, of, I mean, think of anything, follow-up, demonstration presentation, objections, how to set up appointments. They go through all of this over the course of 1,500 videos, so you can kind of pick and choose where, you know, what area of your business needs tweaking. So that's something I encourage you. I'm still working on it. I just finished up one of the, one of the um, certifications last night. My goal is to be certified in all, I think there's five or six certifications. Um, and I'm about halfway through pretty much all of them, but I just finished one of them. So I checked that one off, thank goodness. But what it's doing is, it's just making me more comfortable as a business owner. The dentistry part I got down pat. I've been doing it for 20 years now. But the business part, you know, sometimes I, you know, don't know everything, okay? That's where I have to learn. And I know with Grant and his associates, it's been helping me tremendously. So if you're interested in it, please contact me at docaldrich at gmail.com and I'll hook you guys up. So today we are talking about systems. As a business owner or executive, you always have to be looking at the systems in different areas of your business and know when you gotta tweak them, know when you gotta improve them, know when you have to do something a little different so that you can increase your bottom line. That's what it's all about. Everybody wants a raise, right? The only way you're gonna get a raise is if you're bringing more proceeds into the corporation. So today we were talking about new customers and there's four big areas that you really need to look at as a small business owner or executive so that you know you can tweak these four areas if you need to. So you really have to pay attention especially at the end of the quarter here. This is end of the year, last quarter to try to see if you can make your bottom line bigger than last year's, right? And there's still time. There's plenty of time for that. Number 1 how do you get customers? 
You have to look both your, your direct and your indirect methods. Is there any way that you can tweak those, right? And increase them and make them uh, better. So you're, you're improving them. Number two, how to set up an appointment, right? Do, you know, how quickly can you get the ball rolling? Fast is always better in this circumstance. Uh, number three, your demonstration or presentation. What do you include in that? Can you bring in third-party data, social proof, such as testimonials, videos, links, like as much information as you can, plus the product or service, so they can touch and feel things, so they can see a before and after kind of thing, right? They want to know, does your product solve their problem. That's the only way that they're going to buy from you. So during your demonstration or presentation time, or for me, my, my present case presentation, I have to be convincing and show them that I can indeed solve their issue. And the fourth thing that you got to look up, which is probably one of the most important things, once you get them, how do you follow up with them? Or you didn't get them. Maybe it's just not the right time. Maybe this certain product, they don't have that problem yet. But you don't know in six months from now, in three months from now, in two years from now, maybe your product will be per, uh, perfect for them. But if you don't keep following up with them, they're gonna forget you. Oh yeah, they, you know, they've already seen 13 other companies that have tried to sell the same product, right? Because you're not that unique, right? You're not that different from other people. If you do not follow up with these people, they're gonna forget you. And then you'll never do business with them. So follow up is a very important step in all of this. If you do get them, you need to follow up with them. If you don't get, get them as a new customer or patient, you still gotta follow up with them because you never know when they're gonna decide to start doing business with you. So that's it for me today. I hope everybody uh, learned something, please, Review your new customer system, your process for getting new customers and turning them into old, satisfied customers. I hope that um, that helps everybody. Remember, I upload the Habit Lunchtime with the Habit Master episodes to Spotify and iTunes if you want to listen to this as a podcast. Also, later on in the day, I have to re-record things, but I always upload it to YouTube. If you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, go to The Habit Master and subscribe. I have tons of other videos on there that have nothing to do with uh, the lunchtime with The Habit Master shows. And usually what we're focusing is on the uh, habit formula methods and the three pillars of success, which is mindset, planning and then action. So go to uh, YouTube and subscribe to the Habit Master channel. Remember, if you want to learn more about the Habit Formula, go get a free copy today. It's easy, it's a, it's a downloadable thing, it'll take you two seconds. Go to the habitformulabook.com. There's also upgrades available if you really wanna dive into this material. So I hope everybody has a great day and remember, we wanna build good habits together. I'll see you guys tomorrow.